In the next several lectures, we're going to discuss the concept of a genetic mutation. Now, any sort of change or alteration to the composition of a DNA molecule other than genetic recombination is known as a genetic mutation. Now, how exactly do genetic mutations actually arise? Well, our genetic mutations can arise as a result of two things. They can either arise spontaneously due to the mistakes that take place in the natural processes inside the cell or they can also arise, they can be induced by outside physical or chemical agents by outside forces such as UV radiation. So if our mutation arises as a result of the natural processes that take place inside our body such as a mistake that takes place during DNA replication in which our DNA polymerase does not actually fix the mistake, such a mistake, such a mutation is known as a spontaneous mutation. On the other hand, those mutations that arise in the DNA as a result of some outside factor, some outside physical or chemical agent such as a mutagen, these types of mutations that are induced inside our DNA are known as induced mutations. So we have two reasons why our mutations take place. They take place spontaneously or are induced as a result of outside factors. Now, what types of mutations do we have? So mutations can be categorized in two ways. So we have point mutations, which are also known as base pair mutations or base pair substitutions. And we also have frame shift mutations. And there are two types of frame shift mutations. We have insertions and deletions. So frame shift mutations, we're going to focus on in the next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to focus primarily on the point mutation, also known as a base pair mutation. Now, what exactly is a point mutation? Basically, when a mutation takes place on a single nucleotide on the DNA molecule, such a mutation is known as a point mutation. Now, our point mutation can either take place on the non-coding region of the DNA, the region that does not code for any protein, or it can take place on the gene, on the coding region that codes for a protein. In either case, if our mutation, if the point mutation takes place on either our non-coding region or on the coding region, and if the mutation does not actually cause any significant damage, any significant change, such a point mutation is known as a silent mutation. Now, it's kind of obvious why a point mutation on a non-coding region will lead to silent mutation. That's because our non-coding region doesn't actually code for any protein. We do not use our non-coding region to synthesize any type of polypeptide chain. And so, when we have a point mutation taking place on our non-coding region, that will lead to a silent silent mutation. So a mutation in the non-coding region will not cause negative effects because the non-coding region is not actually used to synthesize our proteins. But what about a mutation that takes place on the coding region? So we said that sometimes a mutation can take place, a point mutation can take place on our coding region and still not actually cause any, harm, um, any harmful effect. It can still produce the same exact protein with the same exact structure and the same exact function. Well, the answer lies in the genetic code. Remember, the genetic code contains 64 codons and we only have 24 amino acids and that means we have more than one codon that basically codes for the same exact amino acid. And this means our genetic code is degenerate, it is redundant. And so that means sometimes 
if we basically change as a result of our point mutation, if we change one codon for a second codon and that second codon codes for the same exact amino acid as the first, then such a point mutation on the gene will be a silent mutation because it will produce the same exact amino acid sequence and therefore the same exact protein. So once again, what, what about a mutation in the coding region? So remember that codons are a sequence of three nucleotides that are used to link amino acids. So we use our codons to basically create our proteins. There are 64 codons and only 20 amino acids, which means that the different codons can code for the same exact amino acid and this makes our genetic code degenerate. Therefore, if a point mutation occurs, uh, if a point mutation uh, occurs and causes a change in the codon but the new codon still codes for the same exact amino acid, no change in protein structure will take place because our sequence of amino acids will be exactly the same. Now to see what that actually means, let's take a look at the following diagram. So let's suppose this is our DNA template that we're going to use to basically synthesize our mRNA molecule. This is our antisense strand. So basically on the five end, we have the C, then the A, the C, the G, the C, and on the three end, we have the G nucleotide. Now, if we actually use this DNA, mo uh, this DNA molecule and transcription takes place, then we synthesize the following mRNA molecule where the C becomes a G, the A becomes a U, the C becomes a G, the G becomes a C, the C becomes a G, and the G becomes a C. So this is our sequence of nucleotides on the mRNA molecule that will be used to synthesize our protein. Now, if we look on our genetic code, we see that CGC stands for the protein uh, the amino acid arginine while the GUG stands for our amino acid the valine. So let's suppose a point mutation takes place and we basically replace the fourth nucleotide guanine with this nucleotide cytosine. So basically this is our point mutation. So this will be an example of a point mutation that takes place on our coding region that is a silent mutation. So basically this C be, or this G becomes a C. Now when we take this DNA template and it under goes the process of transcription, we form the following mRNA molecule. So the C becomes a G, the A becomes a U, the C becomes a G, and now the C becomes a G, whereas here our G became a C. So then the C becomes a G and this G becomes a C. Now if we look on our genetic code, we see that this will be an arginine and this will be a valine. Notice these two amino acids are exactly the same. And that's because our genetic code is degenerate, it's redundant. And that means that more than two codons or more than one codon can basically code for the same exact amino acid. In this case, we see that the codon GUG and G or the codon, um, sorry, the codon CGC and the codon CGG basically code for the same exact amino acid, our arginine amino acid. So this is an example of a point mutation that takes place on the coding region on the gene and that is a silent mutation that is, it does not produce any type of change. Now, on the other hand, we can have a point mutation that actually causes a change in the amino acid that is produced during the process of translation. And to see what we mean by this example, let's look at the following uh, diagram. 
So let's suppose we begin with the same exact DNA template. This is, is our uh, this is our antisense strand. So we have C A C G C G. So if we transcribe this, we form the following mRNA molecule that contains arginine and valine. So basically, when we translate, we form arginine and valine. Now, if our mutation takes place on the third nucleotide, if the cytosine is changed into an adenine, now when we actually transcribe, the C becomes a G, the A becomes a U, the A becomes a U, the G becomes a C, C becomes a G, and G becomes a C. So this is the mRNA molecule that is used by the ribosome in translation. And when we translate, this will stay an arginine but now this becomes a leucine because the U U G codon codes not for a valine but for a leucine. So basically any time we have a point mutation that takes place on the coding region and which does change the amino acid that is produced, this type of point mutation is known as a missense mutation. So a point mutation in which one nucleotide is substituted for another and this causes a change from one amino acid to another, this type of mutation is known as a missense mutation. So this is shown in the diagram above. And one very common example of a point mutation known as a missense mutation is sickle cell anemia in which the hemoglobin that is formed is basically not as active as it should be. So a missense mutation may or may not lead to problems and an example where it does lead to problems is in sickle cell anemia. So sickle cell anemia is an example of a missense mutation that alters the structure of our hemoglobin. It basically changes our amino acid, glutamic acid, into a valine. And by changing our amino acid, that changes the three-dimensional shape of the hemoglobin molecule and it basically causes the, hemoglo uh, the hemoglobin molecules to aggregate with one another and that can lead to many problems. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is something called a nonsense mutation. So a nonsense mutation is a mutation that changes a codon that codes for some type of amino acid to a stop codon that basically terminates our uh, polypeptide chain prematurely. And by terminating our polypeptide chain prematurely, that basically creates a protein that is non-functional. And point mutations, as well as frame shift mutations, which we're going to discuss in the next lecture, can lead to nonsense mutations.